My name is Michael Dunham. I'm an author, photojournalist, and blogger focusing on Nepali-Tibetan related issues. I'm the author of Buddha's Warriors, the history of the Chinese invasion of Tibet in the 1950s, and the resultant assistance given to the freedom fighters by the CIA. More recently, I've worked in Nepal as a political analyst, interviewer, and blogger on the post-monarchical situation in Nepal. Three years ago, I began a project in which I went to the Tibetan refugee camps in Nepal and distributed ten digital cameras. None of the recipients had ever owned cameras, and only three exhibited any knowledge or experience with photographic equipment. The idea behind my project was to produce a photography book that documented the life of Tibetan refugees, and most important, that was produced by the Tibetan refugees themselves. Why did I think that this perspective was important? After 20 years of close association with the refugee community, I can say without hesitation that, except for the infirm and elderly, who are too feeble to move, I do not know of one Tibetan stranded in Nepal who would remain in Nepal if he or she were given the opportunity to move elsewhere. Tibetans don't want to be in Nepal. And few Nepalis, even those Nepalis who live in close proximity to the Tibetans, really understand this. The international community is also misguided. Westerners who travel to Nepal may visit the Tibetan Buddhist holy sites and see the beautiful stupas and the prayer flags, the devout followers, they hear the chants of the lamas and smell the incense, they purchase Tibetan Buddhist souvenirs and interact with the Tibetan vendors. And finally, they return to their native countries with the impression that the Tibetan community in Nepal is economically thriving, that Tibetans have an easy relationship with the Nepali people, and above all, that Tibetan refugees, unlike their brothers in Chinese-occupied Tibet, are free to worship without state censorship or intervention. From a Tibetan point of view, however, nothing could be further from the truth. Tibetans have no legal status in Nepal. They are not allowed to own property. They are not allowed to own their own businesses and therefore lack the foundation to improve their economic opportunities. They are not allowed to register the births or marriages that take place within their families. In short, they're stuck. Nepal is a dead end from which the refugees see no escape. Even their freedom to worship has been seriously compromised in the last decade. Under increasing pressure from the Chinese government, Nepal has, year by year, tightened its stranglehold on the ways in which Tibetan refugees may worship. They are no longer permitted, for example, to publicly gather in celebration of the Dalai Lama's birthday. And any attempt to do that is going to be met with the full might of Nepal's security forces. So who is in a better position to illustrate and clarify what is going on within the Tibetan refugee community than the Tibetans themselves? That's why I believe my book, Caught in Nepal, Tibetan Refugees Photographing Tibetan Refugees is of such value, both as an historical document and a cultural commentary. There is also one dimension to the project that should be mentioned, these young novice photographers, in spite of rudimentary equipment and training, produced powerfully framed photographs, beautiful in their own right and with the virtue of an intimacy that no Western photographer could ever have hoped to achieve. The book is organized into several sections. The centrality of Buddhism within the Tibetan community, growing up and growing old in the refugee settlements, the importance of community as a source of strength and identity for Tibetans, the political struggle, the book is now completed, including the selection and layout of the photographs. The text which I wrote focuses on the history of Nepali-Tibetan relationship beginning 2,000 years ago up to the present time and tries to explain 
why the political and spiritual lockdown that the Tibetans are in today keep them stranded in Nepal. The publisher, based in Kathmandu, is ready to go to press. The only missing piece of this puzzle is the printer's cost. For that, we need $6,000. If we meet that goal here on kickstarter.com, the book will be available to the public as early as October of this year. I hope that you will join me in my effort to publish what I and my Tibetan associates regard as a unique historical document of the Tibetan refugee situation and their ongoing struggle to achieve even a fraction of the freedom that we Westerners take for granted. Please join us. Thank you.